On the, on the topic, I mean, in terms of your sort of strategy currently, you're obviously taking the populist uh, pathway. Um, what does that mean? <laughs> well, ap appealing appealing to people's uh, more emotional levels, I would guess. Um, I mean, what certainly, you mean certainly, you, certainly, you tap, certainly you tap uh, very strong ideological language quite frequently. Like what? Uh, left wing, you know, this and that, right wing, they, you know, I mean, it's that, that type I of ideological thing. I never really talk about left but or right. Anyways, a lot I of don't really believe in that. Okay. A lot of people would, would say that you're simply taking a page out of the Donald Trump uh, a lot book. Of like which people would say that? Well, I'm sure a great many Canadians, but... Like who? <laughs> I don't know who, but... Well, you're um, the one who asked the question, so yeah. how, you must know somebody. <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm sure there's some out there, but anyways, the, the point of this the point of this question is, I mean, why should why should Canadians trust you with their vote, given, you know, not not just the sort of ideological inclination in terms of taking the page of Donald Trump's book, but what are you also, talking about? What page? What page? Can you give okay. me a page? Give me the page. You keep <laughs> in, saying in terms that. Of, in terms of turn, turning things quite dramatically in terms of of Trudeau and and the left wing and all of this. I mean, you 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 make quite a you know it's it's quite a play that you make on it. So I'm I'm not sure. I don't under, I don't know what your question okay. is. Okay, then forget that. Why should Canadians trust you with their vote? Common sense. Okay. Common sense for for a change. We're going to make common sense common in this country. We don't have any common sense in the current government. You know, the guy prints six hundred billion dollars, grows our money supply by thirty two percent in three years. That's growing the money eight times faster than the economy. No wonder we have the worst infl inflation in four decades. I'm going to cap spending, cut waste so that we can balance the budget and bring down inflation and interest rates. You'll want to be able to pay your mortgage again. You want to be able to afford rent. Then you have to vote for Pierre Polyev because I'm the only one with a common sense plan that will bring back the buying power of your paycheck. Um, second, I'm going to make work pay. Right now we punish work. You know, they're, all, they're asking why doesn't anybody want to work? Because work doesn't pay. Why would you work when you get punished for working? Our country now punishes work. You make it, Trudeau takes it. I'm going to cut taxes so people bring home more of each dollar they earn. Housing. We have the fewest houses per capita in the G7. Why? Too much bureaucracy. We have the land. We have more land than any other country in the G7. Yet why, why do we have the fewest houses per capita? Because you can't get anything built. I'm going to require cities boost home building by 15% per year. Or they're going to lose federal money. But those that beat my target will get a bonus. So we reward good behavior and punish bad. That's common sense too. We're also going to bring home safe streets. People are going to feel safe in Kelowna. Kelowna is the worst crime in all of Canada after eight years of Trudeau and Singh. And I'm going to get rid of their, I'm going to bring in jail and not bail for repeat violent offenders, treatment and not decriminalize crack to bring our loved ones home drug free. And we're going to secure the borders to keep illegal guns out while protecting the rights of lawful, licensed hunters and sports shooters. Going back to the, the drug issue, are you <clears throat> looking at to put any money into treatment? Because that's obviously yes. one of the big things identified. Absolutely. I think that's a great idea. It's the only way out. Treatment is the answer. We need to bring people into beautiful treatment facilities. Uh, you know, I think of uh, one facility I visited in uh, Winnipeg uh, recently. Uh, where the father of a, a young man who died of an overdose has created a beautiful facility where they, 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 they separate the addicts from their addiction, counseling, yoga, sweat lodges for First Nations, um, a fitness program, a job uh, placement after they leave and they're building housing right attached to the facility so that when they graduate we don't just throw them back out on the street, we put them in supportive housing where they can come back get some exercise in the gym, see a counselor, and, and mentor incoming addicts so that they can have a nice, smooth runway to lift off again into a drug-free life. This is obviously going to cost quite a bit, and there's a <coughs> staffing yeah. issues involved in this, presumably. Yes. So my plan on that is I have a dollar-for-dollar dollar principle. Every new dollar I spend will have to be matched with a dollar of savings. So I'm going to cut the money the Trudeau government is spending on giving out um, high-powered opioids, uh, they call it safe supply. It's now clear that it's just being diverted and sold to kids to, to profit drug dealers and pay for fentanyl. 
Um, since that this experiment began uh, in BC, we've seen a 300% increase in drug overdose deaths, and uh, and 30,000 have dead, died nationwide. I'm going to get rid of that program, put the money into treatment, not new drug handouts. I'm going to stop funding activists and bureaucracies and put it into frontline treatment. And finally, I'm going to sue the big pharma, the corrupt pharmaceutical companies who caused the crisis in the first place by flooding the market with OxyContin, which ultimately caused the people to become addicted right across North America. The Americans have now recovered $54 billion. We've covered almost nothing in Canada, so I want to recover those billions and put that money into treatment. Okay, and just going back to, to uh, cutting taxes and, and whatnot, where, I mean, where would you sort of, do you have any targets already in terms of where, where you would make, make cuts? Defund the CBC, save a billion dollars, get rid of the Arrive Can app, reduce the monstrous co contracting out, stop sending our money to foreign dictators, to terrorists, and to international bureaucracies that waste it on themselves, and bring that money home. We're also going to cap spending so the government doesn't grow, and we're going to use the savings uh, to lower the debt and the taxes. And who are the dictators and terrorists that Canada is currently giving money to? Well, President Xi in China gave a quarter billion dollars to the Asian Infrastructure Bank, which is building pipelines that we don't allow to be built here. In, he's building them in Asia, bridges, other Asian projects that are designed to reestablish the ancient Silk Road of the Chinese Empire. Uh, why would we pay to, to, to establish some kind of imperial uh, a, a silk dynasty uh, with Canadian tax dollars for a for communist dictatorship? It's insane. Um, so we want to stop uh, these kinds of giveaways and uh, bring the money home to our own country and our people. So I'm guessing with you as Prime Minister, relations with China would be a bit rockier than they are currently? Well, I think they're very rocky right now. It's just that the they're the ones, uh, the, the, the dictatorship in Beijing is the one in charge. They're basically <coughs> dominating our prime minister and uh, exercising influence against our country. Uh, I'm going to stand up for Canada because this is our country and our home.